All right. Good morning, good evening, good day from wherever you're watching us from, from those who are in Asia, those who are in Africa, those who are in America, those who are in Australia, those who are in Antarctica or something. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Marriage Talk Season 3. Yay, it is wow. on fire and we are so glad to be back. Remember that thing I told you on Sunday? We have a surprise for you. This is it. Mm -hmm. And you see, I'm not a guy with bad surprises. By the way, did you enjoy last Sunday's surprise? If you did, comment on that uh put it on on, on that on, on that section if you can sing please try it if you cannot sing please try writing a poem or whatever yes <laughs> so welcome to marriage talk season three i was about to say with pauline and peter and you know uh, you know oh, <laughs> you know we've just uh, you know we are just doing this differently yeah. and you know but they are around you will see them because they are here with us yes so uh you remember there was something we were talking about on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us what we will be talking about today? Oh, yeah. So today will be... But wait a moment. Marriage Talk is back with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> so today we'll keep to the discussion and get to widen our scope of the distraction that take away the one thing. Mm. There's so many distractions, especially, mm. you know, for the last, I think, 11 months. Yes. There has been so many distractions you wake up today, this announcement, then tomorrow a different announcement. Yeah. Then tomorrow school says this and again something else. So today we are widening the scope yeah. of the distractions of the distractions from the one thing. Mm. So Yeah, so we are trying to basically and and probably let me for the sake of those people who did not watch Sunday's program. Mm -hmm. There's something special these couples did, the couples that are here tonight. There's something special that you just need to go back and check it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just need to go back and check it. So let me briefly introduce on my immediate right. They are pastors Peter and, and Pauline, Pauline. Kamal. <laughs> they are the lead pastors at High Heights Church UK. They are an amazing couple. We've learned so much from them, you know. Just go and check Sundays. You'll enjoy so much. And on the next, we have James and Naomi Mashuri. Woo. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. All right. And on the extreme left there, we have James and Susan Wairia. Let's appreciate them. And you know, one thing I've noticed, apart from the pastors, the rest of us are Jameses. So these... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so uh, uh, the, the, as as my wife has introduced there is that that discussion of that we had mm -hmm. and today we just want to widen the scope oh, yeah. and talk about the things that distract us from the one thing mm -hmm. and what is the first thing we want to look at the business of life the business of life yes mm -hmm. it's so busy it's 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 really so busy now especially when you're in such a first world country it's so busy you might find at the last time you saw your couple is like a week ago okay it can happen mm. so the business of life mm. so how does it distract us from the one thing mm. maybe you can start with the gems oh thank you so much uh, uh let me say um when it comes to uh, please use your mic, your mic please Oh, sorry. Mm. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry about that. So, um, when it comes to like me and my wife here, basically, let me first talk about what is expected during this uh, time of uh, you know business, and uh, we are in a first uh, first world country. What is expected in a marriage? There should be a lot of fun. There should be there should be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, trusting each other. There should be, yeah, together with the business, there should be a, new, a reasonable pace where people are moving at a reasonable pace. And basically, apart from the business, you can decide, like I decided, and I, I, I shared it with my wife, and we decided many years ago that we will slow down <laughs> slow down in this life so that we may be able to see the very important things that we need to handle each and every day 
and we appear simple sometimes because people, many people, uh, many people uh, focus on, you know, they are always in a rush. And you know when you're in a rush, like when you're in a plane, there are so many things you cannot see. When you're, when, when you're in a car, there are several things you cannot see. When you're on a bicycle, probably there are a few things you can see. But when you're walking, you can collect a pin from the ground. So we've decided to walk with each other wow. in this life. Mm. And we see so many things, basically. Mm. We are able to, you know, to rectify. We are able to, to, to guide our children in a godly way. We are able to have time for each other. There are times I find myself you know, standing before my family and making a dance. You know that fun, man. Mm. In this yeah. business, man. Yeah. Can you imagine I still have time to dance before them and we have fun. So yeah, basically that is us. You should give us one last dance before we end the <laughs> No, no, it's for my family. That's why I say Yeah, they are here. It's not for the big family. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 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 pastors, what are some of the challenges that come because of people being so busy with life. I, I think to me is lack of priority. And intentionality. Be and intentionality. And I will say that because you hear somebody say, I don't have time for exercise, yet somebody else has time for exercise. Somebody else have, I don't have time to go to church, but that person has time to go to the social media. So the issue is not how busy we are, are we prioritizing what we are actually spending time with? Because you always have time for what you value. So if you value your family, if you value marriage, you will prioritize that. And when you have so prioritizing that, nobody has more than 24 hours a day, each and every one of us. If there is something that we have, whether you are a rich person or a poor person, we have the same amount of time. But what makes the difference is how we use that time. So that to me is very, very important. Very, very, very important. What do you value? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mom. Uh, for me, I would like to say that, yes, we have, it's been a very busy season because uh, I'm a frontline worker. So I've continued working each and every single day. Uh, it's been very difficult to take like my annual leave. Uh, and then also with the ministry, Nothing stopped. If anything, it became more. But then like pastor has said, like my husband has said, it's what you value. You will give time to it. So if you value your marriage, you will prioritize your marriage. You will decide that nothing, nothing will come between us. It is not ministry. It is not children. Even this being busy, busy, busy will not be it. Because sometimes it has been very busy, especially when we are pre-recording the services and uh, maybe we come here on a Sunday and we have to record three services in a row. So that entire week, I know that my husband will be very busy because he's preparing three messages to be recorded. So at that time, what do I do? I'm not demanding, but I have to realize it's about a balance. One week, he will be preparing for three messages, maybe two Zoom messages, but the following week, it will be a bit relaxed. So we prioritize each other, we are intentional, we spend time together, and we purpose to enjoy each other. One thing I've decided is I'm going to enjoy my husband. Because like he preached once and said, there is somebody who is looking for a husband, there is another one who wants to leave their husband. There is somebody who wants a child, there is another one who is crying about a child. So it's about you choosing to enjoy the blessing that is in your life. And he is a blessing. So. For us, marriage is about, you know, prioritizing, being intentional. Despite the busyness, find time for each other. We only have 24 hours, like he has said, yes. And wow. we are also in our midlife, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you better enjoy each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in Jamaican, they say, get it, get it, I want it. Uh -huh. Want it, want it, I get it. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. What are some of the risks? Let's, let's, let's probably, uh, from your angle, look at the risks that can be involved. When people get so much and they forget their marriage, what are some of the risks that can, be, that can come up out of that situation? Um, I would say the risks, like in our situation, would be 
you know, if you're not careful, it's coming back to not having time for each other because you are busy with yeah. your life. Um, but, you know, I thank God because of technology as well these days because it's not like the olden days where there was no mobile phones, you know, mm-hmm. or even when we got smartphones now, we have places you can do Zoom meetings or WhatsApp calls on video. Uh, my wife would be a witness to this every morning. The first phone call she gets before I get home is from me. Wow. I'm actually the one who wakes up most of the time. And my first question is, how are you guys doing? Did you sleep well? How are the children? Um, that's how I start my day. Before I get home. And I'm driving home. So by the time I get home, I know exactly what's happening in the home. And I know now I'll come take over with the children as she gets ready to go to work. So it becomes as it becomes flawless, mm. you know, the day. So, and now five, 10, 15 minute phone call, I'll talk to the children and they are now excited and looking forward to me getting in the house. And when I get in the house, they are jumping up and down because they know, okay, here we go. Now it's daddy time. Now it's no mommy time. Wow. Yeah. So that time, even of talking on the phone, it's, we still share yeah. within that time yeah. and we get our day ready. Um, such that when I come in, it's just a smooth transition. Um, and also, when she comes from work as well, and even when she's still at work, I will call her or even send her a text. But most of the texts, maybe even the ones I will send her, will be something, and don't forget, she's in the house, because she's working from home. <laughs> but because I have to separate, she's at work, and, and give her the chance and the time to do her, her job, um, that's when we are sharing even messages. Most of the time we find we are sharing messages between ourselves in terms of what are you watching or what are you listening to? What message are you listening to? Oh, this is blessing me. And that's how we also, we intentionally switch between the word of God or what each other are learning. And that's how we actually grow and continue. I think I love what James has just said okay. about calling each other. You know, for us, sometimes my wife works a few minutes from our, uh, like 20 minutes or so from our house. Sometimes I walk her to work, you know, so that we can have time to talk. Mm. There are times we walk with the children to go and pick her up from work mm. so that we can come together, you know, talking. And when she's on break, and she's just left the house probably in the afternoon, when she gets a five, 10 minutes break, she calls and we chat like we've not seen each other for a year. <laughs> Man, and I feel like, oh, this is getting good, man. Yeah. You know, that is how we do it every day. We call each other every single day. Yeah, we, 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 we find time for each other. And I love what James and uh, I don't want to take the the, the, the yeah. one of our no, no, James. No, 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 yeah. it's, it's okay. It, it, yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah. Let wow. me say this, Jay. Yes. Yes, yes. I was talking to somebody the other day, and unfortunately, they are not in a very good place right now in their marriage. And I was telling them, I think what uh, most of the ladies here can resonate with. And I was speaking to him about Genesis, where the enemy came and started talking to Eve. And when the enemy started speaking to Eve, he started telling Eve what she can be. And I told, could it be because the husband did not tell her who she was? Therefore, she wanted to be something. Yeah. And that's where most of the time when we Bible tells us that we affirm and give affection to our ladies, we are enforcing and we are affirming to them who they are. So when they get outside there, they will not be ambitious or to be something that is irrelevant if at all I'm affirming who she already is. And, and, and I took some time, and I don't know whether I was able to convince that man. And I was telling them, it's not what they needed then when you were courting them. It's what they need because ladies need to be armed. And I believe, as James has said there, James has said, I believe that's a very, very crucial thing, especially when we are talking about even in this pandemic, we need to affirm each other. Just remember Jesus. Jesus, Jesus when he was dying, the Father affirmed him first. Affirming is for the present. Encouragement is for the future, and we need to affirm each other yeah. now and again. Now and again. Wow. Yeah. Pastor, I love, uh, can I intercept just a minute? Yeah, yeah, Pastor, please. Yeah. I love yes. what Pastor has said. You know, Jesus, being the Son of God, God Himself took time, several times, to declare that this is my Son, hear ye Him. 
And Jesus knew who he was, so he could in turn say, that was not for me, that was for you so that you can know, you know. And Jesus knew who he was, whom he was, mm -hmm. where he came from when, and where he was going. And he kept saying, and the father kept affirming that this is my son, my beloved. So can you imagine uh, we as married couples, how much time we need to take always affirming our partners and telling them, you know what, my dear, I love you. Mm. Looking mm. them into the, you know, in the eyes and telling them, you know, I love you. You know, like, you know, I do. <laughs> you know, seriously, yeah. we need to do that always. Mm. If yeah. God did it, we can do it. We can do yeah. it. Yes, we can do it. Yeah. And women love that. Yeah. We love actually, hearing that. I'm actually getting there. And, yeah. Um, I'm saying it's really a love language that mm -hmm. starts from father himself. Mm -hmm. It's a blueprint that we can borrow from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And if our husband <laughs> yeah. we can borrow that, them that are even not started affirming your wives, start affirming. It's a, it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. I would say that women love affirmation. Mm -hmm. So I would love to like go back a little bit and ask, can we mention these risks that comes with distractions? Um, the risks that come is that you soon find that some things are not happening as they're supposed to be. Okay, let's take for example, one of the risks is that there could be communication breakdown. And you see, when communication breaks down, that becomes a recipe for disaster. And then so many other things will happen along. So if you're busy, you don't give each other time. You know, for example, a simple phone call a five minute call when you're on break at work. That is something right there you're communicating and telling your spouse how your day has been, catching up to find out how the children are. I mean, how much more simpler can it be as a husband is in the other rooms of the house with the children and the wife is in one room working and the husband recognizes that she is working nine to five. So I need to support her, but we are still, you know, talking to each other and communicating or going to pick your wife and walking back home, you know? We've always said when we are here on Marriage Talks, one of the things we enjoy with my husband is that he drops me to work and he picks me up from work because in this pandemic season, I've not really wanted to use the train. But in the morning when I'm, we are going to work, our phones are not with us. We don't have our phones. We may have the radio on in the car, but we go chatting, we go talking. So that communication, you keep it flowing. So it is a risk, a distraction. If you are that busy, communication mm. could be one thing that can break down. And that is just, like I said, a recipe for disaster. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. Any other? And grow apart as well. Yes. yes. Because um, as, as married couples, um, even if you've been mar married for many years, we still need to, to be on one, one level. We still need to grow to be on the same lane, yeah. as in, you know, we are one, but we are individuals. Mm. This one has his work life. I have my work life. And because, for example, like us, we have young children that we are parenting, so, and homeschooling. <laughs> so we don't have time alone. <laughs> We don't have time alone, so we have to make that time alone mm. somehow, whether it's a phone call, as he said. Um, because I think if you don't communicate, which can happen in a marriage, you grow apart. Mm. And you don't realize you're growing apart until it's too late. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what, you know, mm. we married couples need to be aware of. Mm. I think I'm loving what James is, uh, what Susan is saying yeah. about communication, because when it comes to when it comes to communication, I, I attended a marriage seminar somewhere, and the, uh, the the person who was speaking to us said that especially we men lack the, uh, the that, that initiative of uh, you know taking time to speak to our to our partners to our wives, mm -hmm. and he was saying that we should learn from the example of Jesus. It looked funny to me because. I didn't realize that Jesus kept speaking and, you know, he was accused of, he was accused of <laughs> eating and <laughs> what else? And, and yeah, yeah. And they say that, you know, Jesus came eating and drinking and they called him a gluttonous, but he was also a talker. 
Jesus spoke up to the very last minute. Even on the cross, he was still speaking. <laughs> Before he was betrayed, he told Judas, you know, do what you want to do. Yeah. Then a few minutes later, he told the guys, you are still sleeping, the hour is here. <laughs> then after a few minutes, he said, you've said it. You know, I am. <laughs> then on the cross, he was there saying, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> then in the very last minute, he said, your mother, my, your ma mama, that is your son, you know, yeah. take care of him. And he's been a minute, he said, he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he stopped. <laughs> I know it is finished. Yeah. So Jesus died speaking. So why not we should get an example from our Lord Jesus Christ? Mm. Speak to your wife to the last minute. Mm. Wife loves hearing from us men. There are times my wife comes from work and before she even changes, she has two stories that she wants to finish. And I tell her, please. And I tell her, okay, okay, tell me. And she won't go to the bathroom until she has finished from still social distancing because she has come from work. <laughs> then I listen to them. I give her a hearing ear. And then she, she says, okay. <laughs> Even when she's getting there, I'm coming to finish the other one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we need to, wow. to, to learn from Jesus. <laughs> two, two things I've, I've picked up yeah. from that conversation. Affirmation is for now. Encouragement is for the future. Yeah. Please give what is needed for now. Yes. And also sow into your future. Do not become a, a, a sower only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the uh, Bible declares that he gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so please give your spouse their bread and their seed as well. Yes. Second thing, being available and being present are not the same thing. Yeah. So you may be present, but you're not available. So be available for your spouse. Third and the final thing, G listen to the stories. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice. Listen to the stories. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I think that was very, very nice. Yeah. Okay? And so, even if it's a repeated story, listen, listen to it. it. <laughs> there, okay. there, there, my wife gives me a story and then the, my sons, you know, they don't understand the, you know, the yeah. juicy part of it. And then they tell, Mama, you've told her that story again. <laughs> and then I tell them, please. She's saying it to us. <laughs> listen. <laughs> you know, so even if it is for a second time or that time, listen to it. Yeah. And, 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 and laugh as though, yeah. even if it's a joke, though it's Just fresh, laugh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Though so, you're hearing it for the first time. That's true. It's, like, it's like you're hearing it for the first yes. time. Yes. Because it will come again and but, but still laugh. Still yeah, laugh. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's a trick. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. You, you should, yeah, it's the first time. Let me just go on. Yeah. yeah. You know, let me just, and then. Yeah. And I'm telling you, after that story and the conversation, yeah. everything is okay. Then yeah. yeah. we yeah. go back again. I think, so. I think it was, oh, it should be sometimes early in the week. I think my wife was telling me she got a COVID test. Mm -hmm. And so within 15 minutes, she told me that three things to her. That, <laughs> she told me, babe, I got a COVID test. Oh, how was it? It was negative. <laughs> and she goes and then comes. Did they tell you I had a COVID test? <laughs> ah, no. And how was it? Was, so the third time she said it, I actually laughed. Yeah. She, Did they tell you I had a COVID test? I actually laughed. And she realized, oh, by the way, I have said this thing for a very yeah. long time. So please enjoy the stories. Yeah. Enjoy the story. Yes, enjoy the yeah. stories. Now, enjoy the story. Though. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we, we want to get to the, 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 the nice part. And the nice part is, now we've looked at the risks. How, how can we manage them? We've, we've noticed you, we can grow apart. And, and, and I know along the way we've mentioned some of the things we can do. But probably we can delve deeper for someone probably who missed it or someone, something else that we can add. How can we ensure that even we are productive and at the same time we are one? How do we ensure, how do we strike that balance that we are productive, we are busy with life, we know we want bread on the table, seed for the future, but at the same time, we are still focused on the person. Nothing is compromised. How do we strike that balance? Do we start with our pastors? I would say press a pause button. Press or oh, press a pause button. Yes. Don't learn your marriage, marriage on autopilot. Mm. Don't. Don't. Don't let things you know, roll out haphazardly. Get involved. Look at things. Look at the prediction of some of the things that are happening. Yeah. Be able to tell without really experiencing. Mm. 
where you are heading. And if you need to call a meeting to yourself or to your, with your spouse, you need to do that. We are creatures of decision. This morning I was telling my wife about the scripture that says the steps of a righteous man out of God. And I was telling her most of the time, sometimes when you quote that scripture, we don't actually read what the Bible tells us because the steps are the decision you make. Because decision is to which take you from, you know, steps take you from one place to the other. Decision are what makes you. If I decide right now to start exercising, I'll head to a different destination altogether if my health was at risk. So my decisions are very important. But I cannot be able to take the right decision without pausing and look at where things are learning or where they are heading. Wow. Don't run your marriage on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mom, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I mean, you guys are saying that... Uh, Gladys repeated something thrice. For me, I get up preaching, whether I like it or not. <laughs> Morning, noon, day, night. <laughs> <In> the, <laughs> even when he wakes up <laughs> today, because I woke him up and then he woke up later. He woke up and told me, I was dreaming about you and we were in church. <laughs> and everybody went and we were still left in church, but others came. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Enjoy each other. Don't be on autopilot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a dream. I also in church. <laughs> I know he dreams about church. <laughs> he dreams about church and me. <laughs> hey, wow! <laughs> Together with her, it was a, it was a, a, a fall, actually it was an Anglican church. I'm sorry. It, it, it. <laughs> And we, and we were taking a class. Let me just finish and be politically correct. <laughs> and then, and then to, this is the hardest class because we were, when we started, it was a very big congregation and we were just left two people and then everybody left and we were told, this is the hardest class. But, but we took it. But we took it. And we remained. <laughs> we, remained. we are hardcore. Oh, we have to finish. Amazing. We took amazing. that class. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 I love that. Yeah. I, I read a scripture about, uh, I think it's First Peter, the Bible says that you live with harmony with each other so that you can be effective mm -hmm. and productive at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there's a scripture in the book of Revelation that says that one thing I accuse you of is that you've forsaken the first love. Mm -hmm. I think we, we, we have to be careful and we have to be very intentional. Like mom said when we were starting, to be able to intentionally maintain what we saw, what we saw when we were courting, when we were coming together. I think Pastor mentioned that as well. When what that love that you saw the very first time you saw, like you saw Gladys, or when Mom, when Pastor saw Mom, and the first thing I saw when I, I saw when I saw Naomi for the first time, it's very important. James and Susan as well. It's very important to maintain that thing that first love that is what the bible talks about mm -hmm. you know backsliding basically it's not going back to sin sometimes yeah. it's stopping doing the good that you used to do mm -hmm. can you imagine the things you used to tell her <laughs> those times you used to spend on the phone you know like hours for us hours. you know hours and hours you used to call each other until your your ear could get <laughs> wet you know hot and wet sometimes you know what i mean there were no could not afford their first then. Mm -hmm. We used to write each other letters with my wife, and a letter could take seven days to, to her country because she comes from a different country with, as, from me. And then it could take seven days again for me to get back a reply. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that resilience and well, how that mm -hmm. anxiety yes. and how I used to feel like when is it coming, man? And those are the days where we used to receive letters from the post office. You, you had to go and pick it. So you go several times. And for me, I had to spend some fare, oh. some cash to go and check. And then you go and find it's not yet. Mm -hmm. So you had to wait for two more days so that you can be sure it's there. <laughs> man. So those things. Being intentional about not forgetting the things that you knew and the things that you used to do. We used to spend nights, you remember? We still do. We tell guys sometimes we sleep in the morning and they're like, what do you talk about? Okay, you ask. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about everything. <laughs> the same things we used to talk about. Yeah. 
we can start off on a line and we expand it until tomorrow morning. Mm. My kids know they can tell you. We, we struggle sometimes. Thank God for lockdown. Not that I wanted to stay, but it has helped us because we can be able to utilize every single minute, every single hour. We, we share, we watch movies together. You have to be intentional, man. Mm -hmm. We close the windows, prepare some pop popcorns, man. And then we, we sit in front of our screen and you call us, we tell you we are watching a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is Date us, night. Date yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. We dim the lights and we have our time. Yeah.